Lesson 2.7, Function Notation and Rule. So first we need to understand functions. And remember that functions are used to represent relationships between two values. One of these values will be dependent upon the other. The independent value is also called the independent variable, can only have one dependent value or dependent variable associated with it. So every x can only result in one y. If using x and y, y is generally dependent and x is generally independent. We don't have to use x and y though. Every x value can only have one y value associated with it. That means if I plug in an x, I can only get out one y. Now, a couple of different x's could all give me the same y. That's okay but each x can only produce one y. The independent values make up the domain, and the dependent values make up the range. This can be written without two variables using function notation. So instead of using y equals 3x minus 5, I can use these parentheses f of x, that's read as f of x, is equal to 3x minus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note of that. This is read as f of x. You can also say 3x minus 5 is a function of x. Now when you see this function notation, you know it's a function. We don't have to determine it's a function because it cannot have this notation unless it is a function. Other letters can be used to differentiate between functions. We can use f of x, g of x, h of x, etc. So function rules. The equations we've evaluated previously all express the rule of the function. So that's the way the function works. The equation represents that. A function's rule is the equation that defines how to obtain the output values from the input values. So in our previous example, 3x minus 5, the rule is multiply by 3 and then subtract 5. The input values come from the domain and the output values make up the range. We can determine the rule of a function by looking at input and output values and we can figure out how they were computed. So let's look at the following table and we can determine the rule for the function. So I have x's and I have y's. 0 gives me a negative 3. 1 gives me a negative 1. 2 gives me a positive 1. 3 gives me a 3. And 4 gives me a 5. So our first step is we're going to um, determine the change between the x's and the y's. And by that I mean individual x's and individual y's. So here I'm going up 1, up 1, up 1, up 1. Here I'm going up 2, up 2, up 2, and up 2. Now the change in y, this symbol here in math means change in. So the change in y over the change in x is our slope. That's rise over run, or change in y over change in x. This gives us our slope. Since each of these is the same every time, we can say that our slope is equal to 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. So for the first part of our equation, I know that I'm going to have some y equals 2x. However, if I plug in 0, 2 times 0 does not equal negative 3. 1 times 2 does not equal negative 1. 2 times 2 does not equal 1. And so we need to find, is we need to determine B. And this is the 
sort of altering factor. Okay, so if I know my y is negative 3, and I have 2 times 0 plus what will give me negative 3. I can find this that way. And then I'll do another point just to double check myself. I'll do, let's say my last point, 5 is equal to 2 times 4 plus b. So if I plug this in, I get negative 3 is equal to b. And over here, I get 5 is equal to 8 plus b. And if I subtract 8 from both sides, I get negative 3 is equal to b. This lets me know that what I need to do to finish the rule of the equation is I multiply by 2 and I subtract 3. Now we want to write this in function notation, so I'm going to alter it to be f of x is equal to 2x minus 3, and this will be my final answer in function notation. This describes the rule for this set of values. Now sometimes our tables are represented sideways. We're going to still do the same thing. x is going up by 2 each time, by 2, by 2. And we want to make sure to go all the way and make sure there are no differences in this. Otherwise, that doesn't represent our slope. So I'm going up by 1, by 1. Every time, going up by 1, so I'm good. And again, my slope is my change in y over my change in x. So I have 1 over 2. So my slope is going to be 1 half, which gives me my initial rule of y is equal to 1 half x. However, if I plug in 0, 1 half of 0 is not 5. So I need to find b. So if I say 5 is equal to 1 half x plus b, and then I'll pick another point along the way, maybe this 6 and 8. So I'll say 8 is equal to 1 half of 6 plus b. Sorry, that should be a 0. So 5 is equal to 1 half 0 plus b, so 5 would be b. And just to double check ourselves, if I subtract 3 from both sides, I get 5 is equal to b. And since it worked for both points, I know that that is my correct b value. I'm going to go ahead and go straight into function notation here. I get 1 half x plus 5. Okay, so this is how you determine the rule for the function. Step 1, find the slope doing the change in y over the change in x, and then step two, find b. And we're using that format y equals mx plus b. Okay, non-table example. So this is a word problem. Suppose you have a movie to make, or sorry, move to make. You get two quotes from moving companies. Moving company A charges $30 per day plus 10 cents per mile. Moving company B charges $70 per day but does not charge for mileage. So we're going to write the equations in function notation to give the total moving costs. $30 per day plus 15 cents per mile. And here we have $70 per day. So we're going to have actually multiple variables in this first one. So um, f of x is going to be 30x plus 0.10, I'll just say z. So that's $30 per day for X number of days. This is our days. And this is our miles, plus 10 cents per mile. We'll call this one G of X is just going to be $70 per day. So 70 times X. These will work as our functions. 
Actually, I should technically call this XZ because I have two letters in there. But um, if I need to move from Miami to Nome, a distance of 4,447 miles, and I plan that the trip will take a total of 10 days, which movie company should I use? Well, to find F of XZ, so I've got 10 days and 4,447 miles. I'm going to plug in my 10, and I'm going to plug in my 4,447 miles, and I'm going to calculate this quickly. That's 300 plus 444.7. So 300 plus 444.7 is going to be 744.7. So $744.70. G of X, so G of 10 for the 10 days, is going to be 70 times 10. So that is going to be $700. So we should use moving company B. It's the cheaper company.